Chicago's own Erica Sanchez is the author of the New York Times bestseller, I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. That is being made into a movie on Netflix. But even as she rose rising to fame, Sanchez struggled with her mental health. She is sharing her story in a new memoir. It's called Crying in the Bathroom. And Erica joins us now. Good morning, Erica. Good Thank morning. You for being here. Hi, thank you so much. This is so exciting. It mm -hmm. is great to have you here. Gr child of Chicago, grew up in the 90s. Mm -hmm. What was your, talk about your, your Chicago perspective growing up well you know I grew up in Cicero technically but Chicago was like right down the next yeah. block and so I would look longingly to the skyline all the time um, thinking about you know what I wanted to be when I grow up and how I wanted to live and I would um, take the train and you know just wander around the city it was so beautiful mm -hmm. yeah but the book uh, crying in the bathroom well why are you crying in the bathroom Oh, for several reasons. Uh, most of all because of my bipolar disorder um, that I write about extensively about in the book and in other places. Um, I have struggled with my mental health for my entire life and so crying in the bathroom is, is supposed to be kind of funny but also kind of poignant. Um, I write a lot about what it means to be a woman in this society and how hard it is to be a woman of color and to have ambition as a woman of color. And your first book uh, that's being made into a Netflix movie, it's, it's more of a young adult novel, but why do you think mm -hmm. it's resonated with so many people? Do you think it's because it's you talk about cultural expectations? Has that hit home? I think so. I think a lot of um, people like me have been craving books that are about us and so you know we have Sandra Cisneros also from Chicago mm -hmm. who is wonderful and she's like a literary hero to me and so I, I wanted to follow in her footsteps and um, you know as a result of writing this book so many people have reached out feeling like they connect and it's been incredible. Yeah, so even other ethnicities may feel they're not the perfect daughter or son in right. the context of whatever their culture is, but how did that manifest in your situation? Is it about religion, a religion you chose or is it about just uh, life was hard for your parents? because of uh, your mental illness or for, for what reasons? Sure, I think um, it's just very complicated and multifaceted. And so um, growing up the child of immigrants, you feel like really guilty oftentimes because your parents struggle so hard to keep you alive. And mm -hmm. also because, um, you know, you don't really understand your place in society. You don't belong anywhere. Um, and I think a lot of people could really connect to that idea of being an outsider and, and struggling with poverty and discrimination, et cetera. So it's, it's a really interesting experience that we don't get to see a lot in movies and in books. And it's, it's odd, we're looking at these smiling pictures of you as a little kid, and it's <laughs> like, when did you know you were struggling and we see pictures of you maybe at age five and then when you're in high school when did it hit you that maybe yeah. you were struggling you know I, I i always knew that i felt very deep feelings and it was um often very overwhelming and i was known as a crybaby um but it didn't happen until um, i was about 13. i think puberty was a tif difficult time for me and i just didn't really feel comfortable in my own body mm. and you know girls aren't really especially latina girls aren't really encouraged to embrace their bodies and to feel good about how they look mm -hmm. in that way if they look a little bit different and so um yeah it was a really hard time for me and then in high school i just couldn't find my people i couldn't find a place for myself so i think uh, you know mental illness is complicated it comes in different shapes and forms i don't think Certainly kids don't know what's going on. Often their parents don't know what's going right. on. So how did you all figure this out and yeah. how did you try and turn the corner on it the best you could? Yeah, my parents tried their best from the beginning. I think I just feel that they didn't know, they didn't understand what was happening. And so it took um, you know, a hospital visit for them to really understand what was going on with me. And so um, I, I give them so much credit for, you know, doing what they could, but, you know, they didn't have resources. They didn't really get it. Um, they come from a rural place in Mexico. So it's it's just like a, a culture shock in so mm -hmm. many ways. Like we don't, we don't call ourselves depressed in our community very often. Ah, uh, well, it's gotta be, 
it's, it's uh, unbelievable. You're writing a memoir now, but mm -hmm. especially after the success of your first book, and now it's being made into a movie. How does that feel? It feels amazing. Wow. I'm so honored. America Ferreira uh, is brilliant. She's a true artist. And Linda Yvette Chavez, the screenwriter, did an excellent job. I'm just thrilled all well, together. It's so happy. It's great to have Chicago's very own having such success so congratulations thank to you, you so and much. thanks for coming on the show thank Good to you. Meet you i'm honored thank you for more information you can check out erica l sanchez.com or follow her on twitter and instagram best to you hope to see you again thank you take care you. bye